Hey, it's been a while. This video was originally just gonna be me answering some questions for my Instagram stories, but I ended up filming so much that I just thought I'd turn it into a video for you guys. I also filmed another video which will be out in a few days. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this really random Q&A. Yesterday I asked you guys to leave some questions in my Instagram stories and now I'm gonna be answering them. Where's the tour locations and dates? They are coming Tuesday at 5 p.m. There's four new dates being added. These are gonna be the only ones for now, but that doesn't mean that's all I'm gonna be doing. If these tickets sell really well, then it gives everyone more faith that I can put on more shows. So if you are thinking of coming to one of these shows, like I said, Tuesday at 5 p.m., then please do not hesitate to get them. Please don't wait till the last minute. I know it's really, really tempting because of all the cancellations that have been happening over the past few years, but if you buy one as soon as they're available, it really, really helps artists out. Will you ever re-release Distance and Perfect DP on CD again or even on vinyl? Now, I've said this a few times, guys. I really want to do that. I want to re-release them both on CD and I want to do a double-sided vinyl but it costs thousands and thousands of pounds to do that. So I've made the promise, I've made the pledge that I will be doing them. However, it is conditional. It takes just a little thing on your part. If I reach 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, I will make it happen. It's in your hands. All you gotta do is share my music with people, make TikTok videos and, ugh, oh, good old marketing. Seriously, if I hit 100K, I'll do it. So share my music, share my Spotify, and then you can have what you want. How's the set list come along for your show in May? It is sorted. Um, everything's looking really, really good. There's gonna be songs from every single official EP, both of my albums, and there's gonna be a song that I've never performed live before that isn't on any of those releases. So I think it's gonna be really, really fun. I'm really looking forward to it, but it's gonna be a secret for now. On that note, I wanna know from you, do you prefer it when you know the set list ahead of time or do you like surprises? Me, personally, I like surprises. Um, I like not knowing what's gonna come up next. And I think unless you're an artist with 11 albums, I'm not. I hear the reasoning for wanting to know ahead of time being like, well, I wanna make sure I know every song. To which my answer is, fucking listen to it. <laughs> Just listen to everything and then you're covered. But yeah, I'm on team surprise, so. Probably not gonna get the whole set list out of me. Please spill the dirt tea, it's a banger. So dirt is about someone that was horribly, horribly mean to me um, and about a personal issue in my life. She and her partner at the time were very, very horrible. I wasn't a saint by any means, um, but the dirt was uh, that her partner at the time, who was also mocking me a lot, uh, was supposedly seen on a date with someone else behind her back while they were still together. It's not relevant anymore because they're not together, um, but it became widely known in our circles and yeah, that, that was really it. It was my way of saying like, you know what, you've annoyed me, but oh, I could tell everyone about this. Um, but I never did until now. So like I said, at least I waited till it wasn't relevant anymore. Would you consider making comedy sketches again? Honestly, the answer will disappoint you. I'm gonna say no, but the only reason I'm gonna say no is because quite frankly, you don't want it as much as you think you do. I tried doing comedy stuff briefly uh, a little while back and it just, people didn't want it. I think that era of YouTube um, where you could just be yourself and that was enough, you know, just going, hey guys, do you know what sucks about school? Um, I think those days are long, long over. I also don't think so highly of myself as I used to. I don't think I'm as funny as I once thought I was. I just don't think it would feel very natural. I don't think it would be right, but you know, I, I guess I should say never say never. What is your cat's name again? My cat's full name is Princess Leia Organa of Alderaan because I'm a fucking millennial and I watched Star Wars once. No, I did, I watched Star Wars once. It became a hyperfixation for about one week. And during that week, I got a cat. Um, do I care about Star Wars? Not really. Is she adorable? Obviously. I'm gonna find her, hang on. Hello, Noi. This is Princess Leia. She's seven this year. I got her when she was four months old. She's also called Pigeon, uh, Walnut Whip, Angel Delight, um, knowing, 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 the knowing, pigeon pop. Yes, yeah, she's looking at me, she knows all these. Are you my little baby? Hmm? Oh. Ugh, you're so hairy. Oh, oh, so much hair everywhere. She is one of the worst cats I've ever known for molting. It's, it's just shocking. You can brush her all day, every day, and you'll never, you'll never get rid of all that hair. It's shocking. Any plans for a US tour at some point? I would love to tour outside the UK. Um, unfortunately right now, it's just not feasible. Tours cost a hell of a lot of money to put on. I did a Europe tour once and that was financially crippling. Mostly due to the fact that it was put on at the wrong time in my career and decisions were made that looking back, I really should have taken more control over. But some people just don't know what's right for their artists, I guess. Or maybe they just don't care. 
because it's not their money. But all that aside, I'd love to do Europe again if I could make it work. I'd love to do America, Canada, Australia. But right now, where I am in my career, I just, I need a little bit more of a push before I can do that. So if you guys want to help me blow up in any of those countries, then you know, you know what to do. What's a career you go into if you want a musician? I would say I'd be an alright lecturer, but I can't discipline myself to get out of bed, so I don't know how I could lead students into writing dissertations about North Korea, you know. But fun fact you might not have known, I have said this a few times, if I didn't take that little gap between college and uni, I was actually going to go to uni and study linguistics, because for a while I wanted to be a speech therapist for children. But um, I worked in BHS instead, and then copied um, all the other YouTubers, and here I am now. Honestly, I'm not sure what I'd do, because I don't know what I'd be any good at. And don't say I'm not good at music, all right, I've heard it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard that feedback before. Not saying like, you know, I've heard my music, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. What do you think I'd be good at? Anything? <laughs> is there a song you've ever regretted writing or releasing? Not unless you count Google Plus. Although that did, that did do well, you know, it did help me out. I'm not ungrateful for it, but um, it's getting a bit old now, guys. It's been 11 years and people still ask me to play it. Um, please don't remind me that Google Plus, that parody song, was the most successful song I've ever done. Please don't. I don't like it. I just don't like it. And I won't like you if you say it. You don't have to be funny all of the time. You can just be nice. Apart from that, no, I, I don't think I've regretted any, any songs. Even a gender. I, I wouldn't be too harsh on a gender. Are you going to return to pop music again? Um, there was some pop music on um, my latest EP. There was pop music on my last album. So I'm not really sure if you think I've completely moved away from it, because I haven't. But as for like the villain sound, um, I don't think I'd make that again. If I made pop again, it would probably be like more like relaxed, more mature synth pop kind of sound. Like rather than like, you know, jumping up and down and being like, I hate you, you suck. Oh, wasn't this person mean to me? I think I'd probably try and um, be a bit, a bit classier now. But who knows? What keeps you inspired to write music? 99% of the time I feel creatively bankrupt. It's funny you should say that because a couple of days ago I wrote the first song I've written in like many, 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 many months. I have been feeling the burn recently, the burnout. It's been rough. So I'm not always inspired and I don't think, unless, unless you're looking at Taylor Swift, who is not the standard, Okay, she is the exception to the rule. She's exemplary. Please don't look at artists and think that they're constantly writing, they're constantly inspired because we all go through these creative blocks. And in fact, a lot of artists actually write about their creative blocks. It's kind of a good way to get out of it. But one of the things that I always pride myself on is that I write from the heart. I write about what I'm feeling. I get a little bit self-indulgent sometimes, you know, if I'm feeling happy, if I'm feeling remorseful, um, if I'm feeling sad or angry. You don't even have to turn it into a full song. Just write a verse or a chorus. Just write your feelings down and then try and make your thoughts rhyme, you know, or maybe they don't have to rhyme. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but the best way to get through it is to just fucking do it. Even when you really don't want to. The amount of times I've walked away from a creative session like crying because I haven't got anything in the tank. I just haven't come up with anything and it's just ruined my night. My fiance has been like, why are you crying? I said, because I can't do anything and I'm so frustrated. It does happen. Um, but one of those times you won't struggle and you will come up with some gold and you'll be like, thank God, but you won't, you won't get that unless you try. Any plans for more tattoos? I haven't got a new tattoo in over five years. Um, the last tattoos I got were the ones where I got, I got the birdhouse on my arm, I got an oyster on my, on my elbow there, well not elbow, kind of on the inner arm, um, so there's a birdhouse there, and I also got my elbow done at the same time, I think, which is the most painful thing I've ever done, and they're actually starting to fade a bit now, because it's been so long. I have been meaning to get more, it's just never, I've just not found the time, really, I just have, well I just haven't, haven't found that one thing where I'm just like, I'm booking this, I'm doing it right now. So maybe I won't ever get another tattoo. I just don't know. It's just not, it's not something I think about. Worst regret of your YouTube career and what would you do now? I wanna make a whole video about this. Um, I actually have some plans for it. Like the five things I regret the most, but a lot of them involve just how overly opinionated I was and for what reasons. I regret putting my younger sister online because the internet is fucking weird. I know, I'll save the rest for another video, but I do have a lot of regrets. Also, don't start 10 channels. Just don't do it. And don't put everything all on one channel either. There's a solution somewhere in the middle. You don't have to make a channel for every interest you have. And also, go and, go and get diagnosed for ADHD. 
if that's what you're thinking of doing. It worked out for me. Holy crap did I get pissed off when I found out. Hang on a minute. That's what it was? <laughs> All this fucking time? We were signing things at the meet and greets. I have your book that I want to bring. I always sign everything at meet and greets. Um, well, it's not everything, don't be weird. But if you guys bring along any CDs, any vinyl, any posters, or even my book that I wrote in 2017, then I sign them. Um, honestly, I've, I've had it with people like bring like a big pile of things and they put them on the table. I'm like, whoa, thank you. <laughs> you have absolutely helped pay my rent at least once in my life, so thank you. But I will sign them. I'm always, always grateful to, to see people that enjoy the stuff that I make, so. Of course. Thoughts on fan covers of my songs? I love it. I fucking love to see it. I made a whole video once reacting to them. Um, and there's another question up here as well, asking if I'll ever do another one of those. Um, if I find enough covers that you guys want me to react to, absolutely I will. I love seeing other people's takes on my music and, you know, just hearing that my that my songs that I've come up with in a bedroom, you know, on acoustic guitar or something, can, you know, transform into some something else completely. Um, I love it. I honestly, honestly love it. What's your favourite cheese? Edam? I guess? I would just say like a mild cheddar, but, you know, it feels, feels very pedestrian, doesn't it? I've always liked Edam and smoked applewood. I cannot believe this is a question. Edam for its creaminess. Uh, don't, don't, I can't. I've got hair in my fucking eyelash. It's fucking shocking me. I've never felt so claustrophobic in my eyes. It's because I picked up the cat. Ah. I've never liked a strong cheese. Um, any cheese that like snaps in half when you go to eat it, fuck out of here. But I do like smoked applewood because the, the it's not rind, but there's like spices or something like on the edge of it. And it's a very smoky cat hair. It's a very nice smoky apple-y woody cheese. <laughs> it's very nice. Good stuff. How's your vinyl collection going? And will the torture poets department be joining it? Fun fact. Um, I no longer collect vinyl. I gave it up. It's a very expensive hobby. And honestly, when I moved a few years ago, I, I genuinely didn't have a place to put my vinyl player. And it made me realize that I just don't, I don't consume music in that way as much as I should if I'm buying all these vinyl. Um, so I think it was my sister's birthday last year. I think it was for her birthday. I, I gave her the gift of my entire vinyl collection, bar like a couple of them. And I said to her, listen to them all because here is here is me just sharing my wealth of music taste with you. Like there's nothing in here that I don't like. If you want to know what music I'm into, here it is. I said to her, what you like, keep, what you don't, you know, find a new home for it. And she's done that with a couple of them. She did do that with the white stripes, which I'm fucking fuming about. Get some fucking taste, Phoebe. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm very, very happy that I was able to, you know, give them a new home and I'm glad that she enjoys them. So no, I won't be buying the Torture Poets department on vinyl, but I am really excited to hear the album. I'm still, still a massive Swifty. But aren't we fucking all now, huh? What's the most romantic thing anyone has ever done for you? See, I'm not one for like grand gestures, really. My love language is quality time. I couldn't sound more millennial if I tried. My love language is. <laughs> so little things like when my fiance takes me out to dinner, or just like surprises me with little things, you know, those are the things that I treasure the most. But you know, if you want to talk about like the most romantic thing in the world, I mean, no. <laughs> I got him, bitches. <laughs> oh, I need to grab my nails out for the wedding. I still bite them. It's awful. I'm so sorry you had to see those. They are, they are foul. How do you handle jealousy as an artist if that's something that applies to you? It's definitely something that used to apply to me. Um, I used to get very jealous. In fact, that's what agenda is about. There was a musician who started under sort of similar sort of path with social media, um, who became very known for liking the colour yellow for a while. Um, and I watched uh, her career uh, take off and it was amazing and I was so so happy for her but I am by nature a little bit of a jealous person Scorpio could I sound any more millennial <laughs> Scorpio and you know it's um it's sad to admit but there was a time where I would take someone else's success and make it about myself like why is that happening to this person and not me you know what am I doing wrong and it's such a miserable way to live your life how can you take someone else's joy and success and turn it into your own selfish anger you know, it took me a long time um, <laughs> and a lot of conversations um, to figure that out. You know the old phrase, like, comparison is a thief of joy? Yeah, um, it is. It sucks. But when I stopped comparing my trajectory 
with everyone else's. I chilled out a bit. And finally, met you during your Feel Good 101 book tour. Do you think you'd write any more books in the future? Um, I made a video about how I got blacklisted from the book industry, so I don't think it's on the cards. Um, there was a time a couple of years ago that I had um, a book in mind, but it was actually going to be about just my experiences with social media, how it changed and how it changed me um, personally, and it was going to be called Dislike. Um, but I think the problem with writing a book like that is it's constantly outdated. Things have changed so much even in the past like, couple of years. You know, like I wrote a song in 2018 with the lyrics about Twitter in it. Now I have to, now I have to sing about X. You know, so much changes. Um, everyone's preferences change so quickly that by the time the book came out, it would have been irrelevant anyway. And obviously it was going to be self-published because um, no publisher's ever going to fucking touch me again. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching. It's been a while since we did one of these. We should do it again sometime, maybe in 2025. Sound good? Sweet. Gig News is coming on Tuesday, 5 p.m. Be here, do not miss it. Until next time, guys, I shall catch you later.